As carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere double or triple during this century, more carbon dioxide will dissolve in the oceans and form carbonic acid. This carbonic acid dissociates in water to release a proton and bicarbonate, and then again to release another proton and carbonate. CO2 plus water yields H2CO3. H2CO3 yields a proton plus HCO3 minus. HCO3 minus yields a proton plus CO3 two minus. The exact balance among dissolved carbon dioxide, carbonic acid, bicarbonate, and carbonate depends on the concentrations of proton in the water, its pH, its salinity, and its temperature. Waters near the pole are more alkaline because of cooler temperatures. Higher carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere and warmer temperatures increase proton concentrations in the oceans, that is, they lower pH, and thereby water in the oceans is becoming more acidic. Simulations on GCMs affirm this trend. They indicate that oceans in pre-industrial times were more alkaline, with a pH of 8.25, where a pH of 7 is neutral. Oceans reached a pH of 8.15 by 1994 through 1996, and they will drop to a pH of 7.85 by 2100. The pH scale is logarithmic, so a shift in ocean pH from 8.25 to 7.85 means a 250% increase in proton concentrations a change that will have strong effects on sea life as presented in a subsequent video segment. Warmer sea surface temperatures and cooler stratospheric temperatures accentuate the temperature gradients that empower major storms. Consequently, major storms are increasing intensity. This, together with rising sea levels, exacerbates storm surges and threatens coastal communities adjacent to warm ocean currents. Projections about the frequency of major storms, however, remain uncertain because of the complex nature of storm formation and will require additional data and fine resolution computer modeling. Hotter and dry weather at the mid-latitudes will foster more frequent and more severe forest fires. Forests in the western United States contain from 20 to 40 percent of the carbon sequestered in the vegetation in the United States. Fires might turn these forests into sources of additional carbon dioxide that further accelerate global warming rather than sinks that abate it. Clearly, more intensive management of these lands will become necessary. Earth will continue to warm for many decades after we curtail greenhouse gas emissions. Several factors are responsible for this momentum. First, several of the greenhouse gases are long-lived, greater than 100 years, and so concentrations of them will remain high in the atmosphere even without further additions. Second, oceans serve as large reservoirs of carbon dioxide that only slowly exchange this gas with the atmosphere, less than 0.3% per year. This means that carbon dioxide released from human activities accumulate gradually over time in the oceans will dissipate only slowly once human emissions abate. Third, positive feedbacks between global warming, ice melting, and declining surface albedo, or between global warming, decomposition of soil organic carbon, and release of this sequestered carbon dioxide tend to accelerate global warming and will take time to reverse. In summary, number one, global climate models are tested by comparing their simulations of past climates and the actual climate record. Number two, global climate models affirm that human-generated greenhouse gases have been the major cause of rapid global warming observed during the last few decades. Number three, according to global climate models, average global temperatures will warm somewhere between 1.4 and 6.7 degrees Celsius from 1975 to 2100, depending on human activities. Number four, average sea levels in 2100 will be between 0.53 and 1.43 meters higher than in 1975.